On September 25, 1965, Satchel Paige, age 59, lounged in a rocking chair while a nurse served him coffee at Kansas City Municipal Stadium. He then got up, took the mound for the Kansas City A's, and threw three scoreless innings against the Red Sox. This took place 12 years after he'd last appeared with the St. Louis Browns, making him the oldest pitcher to appear in a game and the oldest to record a strikeout. A fan favorite from his many years with the Kansas City Monarchs of the Negro Leagues, the attendance soared to nearly 10,000, which was more than the A's five previous home games combined. On a similar short-lived contract, Minnie Minoso, who was serving as a coach for the White Sox in 1976, was talked into appearing as a designated hitter, three years after retiring from nearly 30 years in professional baseball. The Living Fossil added MLB career hit number 2113. He would reappear in 1980 and join Nick Altrock in a very unique class of players, players who've played Major League Baseball in five different decades. You could chalk Minoso's appearance up as a publicity stunt, but it did serve to introduce one of baseball's most groundbreaking players to a new generation and bolster the proud, rich legacy that Chicago's South Side has shared with the island nation of Cuba. Over a quarter of current Major League Baseball players are of Latino heritage. Today we're going to look at the career of one of the first, and arguably the most beloved one, Minnie Minoso. Before we get rolling, if you would, please like and subscribe. Help break down the outfield walls that stand between small ball creators like me and a good audience. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Here we go. This is usually the part of the video where I'll say something like this. Born in 1910 in Waukegan, Illinois, ugly Johnny Dickshot was the son of a steel mill worker who'd eventually debut in Steel Town, USA with the Pirates in 1936. Yes, that's a real player. I'm a big Johnny Dickshot guy. Anyway, I can't start this way with Minnie Minoso because he never had an official birth certificate. Baseball historians have gone back and forth about what year he was born, but there's no definitive answer. However, there is proof that young Saturnino Orestes Arietta Armas was baptized on November 29, 1922 in El Perico. Notice how none of these names are Minnie or Minoso. Yeah, it's complicated. Orestes, as he was known then, had two older half-brothers who also played baseball. Their mother's maiden name was Minoso. I suppose it was easier to just follow in the footsteps as the third brother. Minoso grew up working in the sugar cane fields. This crop dominated his local economy. His first jerseys as a young player were made from flour sacks. He first played professionally for the Ambrosia Candy Team of Havana in 1944, making a humble $2 a game. He batted 364 that season. He was then signed to the Marianao Baseball Club, one of Cuba's best. He would earn Cuban League Rookie of the Year honors in 1945. Mexican businessman Jorge Pascal offered him a two-year $30,000 deal to play in Mexico, but Orestes declined. He had his sights set on America. Sure enough, the New York Cubans of the Negro Leagues came calling later that year. So, why the Negro Leagues? Well, it was simply his skin tone and pigmentation, not his nationality that the powers that be had issues with. You know, baseball's quote-unquote gentleman's agreement. Lighter-skinned Cuban players are documented in the major leagues as far back as 1923, where pitcher Dolph Luque led the major leagues in wins with 27. During World War II, the Washington Senators had seven Latino players on their 25-man roster. They were given six-month visas to play here. Literally an abundance of one amino acid, melanin, delayed a race day's major league debut for three years. Finally, in 1949, the Cleveland Indians bought out his contract and he debuted with the Dayton Indians in the Class A Central League. This made him the seventh black player to play in the majors. He struggled with the language barrier between him and his coaches quite a bit in the minors. He thought the take sign meant take a swing. So needless to say, he had an aggressive approach. Misunderstanding would also provide him with his longtime nickname, Minnie. 
finally having access to healthcare maintenance, Minoso sat in the waiting room for his very first dentist appointment. When he heard the dentist call out for Minnie, his female receptionist, Minoso assumed this was a mispronunciation of his last name. He answered the call. He'd be known as Minnie for the rest of his days. On April 30th, 1951, Minoso was traded to the Chicago White Sox in a three-team deal with Cleveland and Philadelphia. In his first at bat at Comiskey Park against the Yankees on May 1st, he hit a 415-foot home run shot. He would come in second to Gil McDougal in AL Rookie of the Year voting that year. Minnie led the majors in stolen bases for three straight years from 51 to 53. Chicago fans would bestow him with another nickname, the Cuban Comet. Every time Minnie reached first base, the fans would chant, go, go, go. They felt it a physical impossibility for a catcher to throw him out at second. The White Sox teams of this era are often referred to as the Go-Go Sox. Many sported a rare combination of speed, contact, and power that you could look at as sort of a sneak peek of what Roberto Clemente would become a few years later. During this time, he was also the Major League hit-by-pitch leader in 9 out of 10 seasons. He crowded the plate like no other and could lean into a fastball high and inside to steal first base, if you will. This style of play was most definitely a reflection of his years in the Negro Leagues. Statistically, many had a phenomenal 1957 season, but the Go-Go Sox were gutted for a rebuild. He spent two years back in Cleveland before beginning his second stint with the White Sox in 1960 and 61. He would see brief stints with the Cardinals and Senators before returning to Chicago for a third time in 1964. Chicago lost the pennant by a single game that year. Mr. White Sox was losing his speed and reaction time at the plate. He would step away and play in the Mexican League following that season. Nobody really noticed at the time, but Minoso had quietly compiled over 4,000 career hits in the four combined professional leagues he had played in. Very few have reached that milestone. Coach Minoso would of course agree to DH for the 1976 White Sox. This was headline news in the sports community. He would start a game against the Angels and go 0 for 4, but he would single the next day as a pinch hitter. He reappeared again in 1980 at age 50, give or take, notching his fifth decade in the majors. The White Sox actually tried a designated hitter cameo with Minoso again in 1990 to put him in the record books for a sixth decade. Major League Baseball declined the request, but he did sign a one-game $32 contract with the independent St. Paul Saints, where he'd ground out in his only appearance. This ball was immediately removed from play and express shipped to Cooperstown. And true to the pattern, in 2003, Minoso once again suited up for the Saints, this time in his 70s. In his only at bat, he tried his trademark, leaning into a high fastball to steal first base. The umpire was having none of it, and it was called a strike. He eventually succumbed with a strikeout, but nonetheless, he was now a seven decade professional baseball player. Mini Minoso's number nine White Sox jersey was retired in 1983, and the Mr. White Sox statue was also unveiled in a touching ceremony. He would stay in the Windy City until his death in 2015. He was in his early 90s. Unfortunately, he would not live to see his Hall of Fame induction in 2021. This occurred just months after the White Sox made history by becoming the first team to have Cuban-born players occupy the first four spots on their lineup card, with Luis Robert, Yoan Moncada, Jose Abreu, and Yasmani Grandal, respectively. In an ESPN interview, Hall of Famer Orlando Cepeda called Minoso the Jackie Robinson of Latino players, immortalized for paving the way. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Mini Minoso. Um, we'll be ready in April 9th, and I hope you'll be there with us, and I know we're going to do the best we can to make you feel happy.